Welcome to this week's video blog brought to you by Mash Web Design and how to use a WP Query class to display posts from a custom post type. So firstly, what is WP Query? The WP Query class enables developers to perform in-depth database queries in a safe, easy to use way. To start interacting with WP Query, all developers need to do is supply simple parameters that query the object. WP Query looks after everything else including the SQL commands and ensuring proper data types are being used. As we previously mentioned, WP Query is much simpler to use. All we need to do is enter our parameters inside an array and everything else will be looked after for us. By using WP Query, we are removing the need to use pure SQL to obtain information. So when would we want to use WP Query? The most common use of WP Query is to run a loop. The WP Query provides a whole host of useful functions for common tasks within the loop. For example, we can use the method HavePosts to check if there are any posts to show, and if there are, we can run a while loop uh, with specific conditions. This allows developers to iterate through the relevant posts. As long as we call WP Query method, the post inside the world statement will have instant access to a whole host of information regarding the post including its title, content, featured image, and custom field values. That's enough theory for the time being, so let's head over to Dreamweaver and put WP Query to action. Our main aim for this tutorial is to display a range of different books from our pre-set up custom post type. However, before we jump too far ahead of ourselves, let's create the basic fundamentals of a WP Query loop. The first thing we need to do is to initiate the WP Query class. So let's go ahead and create the WP Query variable and then uh, that will contain the WP Query object. We could then either pass the arguments directly into the parentheses or set up a separate variable to contain all arguments. Above our WP query object, we will then create a variable named arguments that will contain our array. We will use this array later on to determine exactly what parameters we would like our loop to run. Before we display any posts onto the page, we will first want to set up a conditional statement to check that the query has returned any post to display. To do this, we will use have posts as a conditional for our if statement. It's important to remember that as we are working with object oriented PHP, we can't call the method without specifying the object beforehand, followed by an arrow. After we have checked that the WP query is returning posts, we now need to set up our while loop to iterate over the posts and display the information. We do this again by using the HavePosts method as a conditional statement. In order to access the post data, we need to ensure that we call the method the post inside each iteration. The post sets up all the internal variables within WP Query along with the global post variable. Let's go ahead and do this now. We now have access to the post data, so we can go ahead and use familiar WordPress functions like the title, the content, and the post thumbnail. I should sort the title. I should add the content. And that should add our thumbnail. 
One last important thing to remember is that when we use the method the post, we need to ensure that once our loop is complete, we use the built-in WordPress function WP reset post data. The reason we call this function is to restore the global post variables of the main loop. If we go ahead and run this loop now, um, you shouldn't be able to see any changes on the page. This is because we haven't yet passed any arguments in. So if we go back over to during reader. There are a whole host of arguments that can be passed through the query, and running over all of them is far beyond the scope of this tutorial. However, you will be able to find full documentation on, the w uh, on WP Query on the WordPress Codex. A link will be provided within the supporting blog post. Now we're back at our text editor, we'll go ahead and perform a simple query on a post category. We can do this by passing the following parameters, um, the category and then the category number. If we save this code and have a look over at the results, you should be able to see our Hello World post being displayed. Now we've tested our loop, let's go ahead and add further arguments. Our aim is to pull out two posts from our custom post type box. Let's go ahead and add the relevant arguments. Post per page refers to the amount of posts that the loop will display, while post type refers to the name of the post type we've set before. If we save this code um, and have a look in our browser app, we should be able to see two posts are returned. Misery and Harry Potter. Both books are personal favourites of mine, and which is why I've used them. But let's continue to customise our results by adding two further parameters, an order and order by. Firstly, order defines whether the post will be displayed in ascending or descending order. By default, they are displayed by descending. Order, block, order by allows developers to define how to sort the results by parameter. For example, post date, author, or title. So let's go ahead and add them. In this case, we want to display posts in ascending order by the title of the book. Therefore, we should be able to see when we save this, Harry Potter appear first, followed by Misery. Which you can see here. You should now definitely have a good feel of the power of WP Query and how, it is, yeah, how easy it is to display posts from different post types. But before we round up this video, we'll put WP Query to the test and see how it deals with taxonomies assigned to post types. The custom post type currently features a genre taxonomy, which we will aim to do. Uh, what we aim to do is to filter the results to only show the genre fantasy. To do this, simply add the name of the taxonomy as the key and then add the term as its value. So if we go ahead and do that. Save this and head over to your site and you should be able to see Harry Potter is the only one showing, as you can see. If we quickly change this to horror, you should be able to see misery.
Although this is only a real basic example of how to filter by taxonomy, next week's video will be a far more in-depth tutorial. Today's tutorial, uh, tutorial should have given you the basic fundamentals of how to set up a WP query loop, as well as how to filter your results. That's all for this week's video blog. Until the next time, bye-bye.